Hi, my name is Travis. Let's dive in. The full screen template allows you to build state driven full screen experiences without writing a single line of script. A state is defined in the template by specifying which objects are shown and which animations and sounds are played at a given time. You then specify how one state transitions to another, either via time or a full screen user tap. At its most basic, it allows you to create a lens that shows a full screen animation and plays a sound on tap. The ability to change states together gives you the power to go beyond this and create complex multi-state experiences, all without writing a single line of code. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a lens that makes the user a contestant on an imaginary game show called Guess What? The lens waits for a tap to show the game show's logo. After the logo disappears, the lens waits for a tap again to freeze the video and scroll the credits. Finally, the lens waits for the credits to finish before resetting the entire experience. First, open Lens Studio and select the full screen template to create a new project. The template has example content already included to help you understand how the template works. I'm going to walk through how we imported this content into the template. So to start, I'm going to delete the example content labeled Remove Me in the Objects and Resources panels. Next, I'm going to delete all of the example states that are underneath the full screen template manager. First, I'm going to import the resources I'll be using for this lens. To start, I'll import our non-animated textures by dragging them from my computer to the resources panel. Next, I'll do the same for the MP3 sounds we'll be using. Finally, I need to import the 2D animations. For each 2D animation, I'll import an image sequence that makes up the animation. To do this, select Add New, Texture, Animated from Files in the Resources window. Then, select all of the images that make up your 2D animation. Note, the animation frames are ordered alphabetically. Next, the Sprite Sheet Creation tool will appear. I'm going to keep file count set to 1. This specifies how many files the resulting Sprite Sheet sequence will be spread between. More files results in higher resolution for your animation, but at the cost of size on disk. I'm also going to keep the resolution of the sprite sheet set to 2048 by 2048. This specifies the size of a single sprite sheet image. Finally, I'm going to lower the quality to 50, which specifies the amount of PNG compression. Then, I'll click OK to create the animation. With the new animation selected, I'm going to tune the animation duration in the inspector panel. With my assets imported, I'm now going to create a billboard for all my 2D image assets. To do this, select Add New and Billboard in the Objects panel. With the new billboard selected, set the base text field to whatever image you want the billboard to use. Then, tune its position by first switching to the 2D editor via the Screen Mode button in the Scene panel. Then, simply drag your billboard to where you want it to appear on the screen. Use the bounding box to resize it. I'm also going to create a post effect which I'll use to color the camera feed. Select Add New Post Effect in the Objects panel. Then, with the post effect selected, set its main texture to your color lookup table. For more information about creating a lookup table, check out the post effects guide in the Lens Studio documentation. Now that I have all my assets set up, it's time to link them to states and add the interaction. To start, I'm going to add a new state to the full screen template. Right click the full screen template manager and select create scene object. Name the object to describe your state. Then in the inspector panel, add a new script component. Click add script and find the full screen template state script in the full screen template folder. We now have a state. I'm going to duplicate the state to create the four states of the experience. The states will play back in the order they appear in the Objects panel underneath the Full Screen Template Manager. Note, your state must be a child of the Full Screen Template Manager to work. With the first state selected, let's look at the tunable settings it has in the Inspector panel. Each state has three sections, On Start, On End, and End Condition. Everything in On Start happens when the state starts. The On Start section allows you to specify which objects are enabled, which animations should play, and which sounds should play. Everything in On End happens when the state ends. 
The on end section allows you to specify which objects to disable, which animations to stop, and which sounds to stop. Finally, end condition allows you to tune how a state ends. If end on tap is enabled, the state will end when the user taps. If end on time is enabled, the state will end after a specified amount of time. For this state, I'm going to add an animated TV effect to on start's enable objects. I also want a sound to play in the first state, but stop when the state is finished. To do this, I'll add a sound to on start's play sounds, and also add it to on end's stop sounds. Finally, I need to specify how the state will end. In this case, I want the state to end when the user taps, so I'll select End on Tap. In the preview panel, press the refresh button to see your changes. The music is playing, and when I tap the screen, it stops. For the next state, I want the Guess What logo to appear and play its animation. I'll add the Guess What billboard to On Start's Enable Objects, and add the same billboard to On Start's Play Animations. Because I want the logo to go away when the state ends, I'll also add the billboard to on ends disable objects. I also want to start a new sound, so I'll add it to on starts play sounds. I want the sound to continue into the next state, so I won't stop it at the end of the state. Finally, for this state, I want it to end after a set amount of time or when the user taps. To do this, I'll enable both end on tap and end on time. I'll tune how long the state should last by adjusting end time length. Press refresh in the preview panel to see your progress. The next state is simple. I want to show an image that hints the user to tap. I'll add the tap to freeze hint billboard to on starts enable objects. Because I want the billboard to disappear on state end, I'll also add it to on ends disable objects. Additionally, I'll stop the sound we played in the last state when this new state ends. To do this, I'll add that sound to on end stop sounds. This state should end when the user taps, so I'll enable end on tap. The tap to freeze hint billboard is unique in that I want it to disappear when the user is recording. The template includes a helper script that makes this easy. With the tap to freeze hint billboard selected, add the script hide when recording, which is found in the helper scripts folder. Make sure frame updated is selected in the event dropdown. This billboard will now not be shown when the user is recording. And again, press refresh in the preview panel to see your progress. For the final state, I want to freeze the camera slightly zoomed in, darken the screen, and scroll the imaginary show's credits. In on start to enable objects, I'll add the credits and a black texture to darken the camera. Additionally, I'm going to add one of the helper billboards that's included in the template called Freeze Camera 2X. When this billboard is enabled, the camera feed will be zoomed in and frozen. We've included different zooms for you to use in your lens. You can also adjust the zoom level on your own by adjusting the billboard's width and height. I'll also add the credits music to the state by adding the sounds to On Start's Play Sounds. When the state ends, I want to disable all of the objects that were enabled in the state and also stop the sound. Finally, for this state, I want it to only end after a specified amount of time. I'll check the end on time box and tune the end time length. As before, refresh the preview panel to see your changes. The final piece of the puzzle is getting the credits to scroll. While you could have built this motion in a 2D animation, this would have cost a lot of disk space. With this template, we've included a tween system which allows you to move, scale, and rotate billboards inside LED Studio over time. Basically, it's a very simplistic animation system. With the credits billboard selected, add a new script component and set the script to tween billboard, found in the helper's tween system tween types folder. The tween allows you to specify a start position and end position. For the credits, the Y position should start low and end high on the screen. Finally, I'll configure the time to be how long I want the credits to last. By default, the tween will play automatically, but I want it to instead play when the state starts. To do this, I'm going to uncheck Play Automatically and name the tween. Then, 
I need to add one additional script to tell the tween to play when it's enabled within a state. Add a new script and select Play Tweens on Start found in the Helpers folder. Then, add a reference to whatever you named your tween in the Tween Names section. Refresh the preview panel and your credits will now scroll. The state system loops back to the beginning so the user can play the experience as many times as they'd like. If for whatever reason you want the experience to end on the last state, simply don't enable either of the end conditions. The full screen template can be utilized for creating a simple experience, like just enabling an animation and sound on tap. But it can also be used for creating complex linear experiences chaining together multiple states. And the included tween system allows you to add simple animations within Lens Studio. Thanks for watching, and have fun creating your own Snapchat lenses using Lens Studio.